Section 5 of Favorite Fairy Tales Retold. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Libby Marie Lennon. Favorite Fairy Tales Retold by Julia Darrow Cowles. Old Shut Eyes and His Dream Umbrella. Night is drawing on and little Hylmar is sitting quietly by the fireside on a little footstool. Now Hylmar does not hear a single footfall, but just the same, someone is coming up the stairs. Someone in a coat of silk that shimmers all red and blue and green. It is old Shut Eyes, the wonderful teller of dreams. He has taken off his shoes so he will not be heard, and he opens the door so that not a sound reaches Hylmar's ears. Puff! Before Hylmer can raise his eyes to look, Old Shut Eyes has sent into them an invisible spray, and then Hylmer's lids close, his head droops, and he is carried off to bed. But Old Shut Eyes steals softly in after him and sits down beside his bed. Hylmer has been a good boy all day, so Old takes from under his arm a beautiful umbrella all covered with pictures, and he raises it over Hylmer's bed. Old Shut Eyes carries two kinds of umbrellas. One is for naughty children, and it has no beautiful pictures at all, and then there are no beautiful dreams. But Hylmer's umbrella has wonderful pictures, and Ole begins at once to tell him about them. First, said Old Shut Eyes, I am going to make things smart. As he said this, the plants in the pots in Hylmer's room stretched up into trees, the branches blossomed forth with wonderful roses, and all the room looked like a lovely arbor. There was fruit on the trees, too, and it tasted like the richest jam, and the vines were covered with buns, just bursting with plums. Oh, it was delightful. But in the midst of all these wonders, there came a noise of grumbling, and it came from a drawer in the table. It was the drawer in which Hylmer kept his school books and slate. Old Shut Eyes opened the drawer. The slate was twisting itself into the most wretched shapes, "'What is all this?' exclaimed Ole. "'Oh, I am in great misery,' said the slate. "'There is a wrong figure in one of my sums, and try as I may, I cannot change it.' A little pencil tied to the slate by a bit of string was tugging with all its might. "'I would change the figure if I could,' it cried in a creaky voice. "'But I can't.' At that, the copy-book began to lament. Ole turned the leaves. He saw a nice stiff row of capital letters and a nice stiff row of little letters. These were the letters that were printed in the book, but beyond these were other letters that Hylmer had made. They leaned this way and they leaned that way, and some of them were almost tumbling off the line on which they were supposed to stand. Ole Shut Eyes looked closely at them. He could see that Hylmer had tried to make them like the copy, but his small fingers could not make the lines go where they should. We would like to be stiff and straight wailed the letters, but we are so crooked we can't stand up. Dear me, said old Shut Eyes, I shall have to give you a dose of medicine. Oh, oh, no, no, cried all the letters together, and they stood up as stiff as anything. Now I will drill you like soldiers, said old. One, two, one, two, one, two. Oh, how stiff they stood as they marched up and down the page. But I must tell you that the next morning, when Hylmer awoke and opened his copy book, they were just as crooked as ever, and the sum hadn't come right either. The next thing that Old Shut Eyes did was to touch a picture that was upon the wall, and the painted birds in the trees began to fly about and sing. The grass and flowers nodded in the breeze, and the river began flowing toward the sea. Hylmer put his foot up into the picture, and there he stood under the trees, before him on the water was a little boat, painted red and blue, and it had silver sails. Hylmer stepped into it, and away it sailed down the stream. Pretty fishes splashed about in the water and swam after the red and blue boat. The fishes had scales of silver and gold. Birds sang to Hylmer as he passed through deep woods, and the trees told him stories, dark stories about robbers and witches. Then the little boat sailed past an open space where there was a neat cottage. A young woman came out of the cottage and sang a song to him, and she was the woman who had been Hylmer's nurse, 
and the song she sang was one she had sung to him many, many times before when she had held him in her arms. As the song died away, the woman and the boat both seemed to vanish. The next that Hylmer knew, Old Shut Eyes was introducing him to a little gray mouse that was on her way to a wedding. Two of the mice who live beneath your mother's pantry floor are to be married tonight, said the mouse politely. Would you like to attend the wedding? Very much, said Hylmer. But how am I to get there? I'm too big to go through a mouse hole. Leave that to me, said Old Shut Eyes, and in a twinkling, Hylmer found himself even smaller than a mouse. He hastily put on his tin soldier's uniform, which fitted perfectly and was very grand. Now step into this thimble of your mother's, said the mouse. I will make an excellent carriage, and I will draw you to the wedding. So Hylmer seated himself in the thimble and was driven away to the wedding. Perhaps the thimble carriage was a teeny bit small. At any rate, Hylmer turned over in his bed and muttered, Are there any more stories? There's no more time for stories, said Ole. Tomorrow is Sunday, and I must get the world all polished up. First of all, I must see that the brownies up in the church tower are burnishing the bells. They must ring clear and true to call the people to worship. I must see that the breezes have brushed the dust from the grass and flowers. They must be fresh and sweet. Those things are easily attended to, said Ole. But it isn't so easy to polish the stars. You see, he continued, first of all, I have to get them down and take them in my apron to polish them. But it doesn't do to be careless. No, indeed. I must number each star in each star hole so that I can put them back in their proper places. If I didn't do that, they would not stick, and we should have too many falling stars. At that, the picture of Hylmer's great-grandfather, which hung upon the wall of the room, spoke. Now, I say, Mr. Shut-Eyes, it said, I am quite willing that you should tell Hylmer stories, but really, you must not puzzle his brains with such stories as this. The stars cannot be taken down to be polished, you know. They are planets, like our Earth. But old Shut-Eyes smiled wisely. Thank you, great-grandfather, he said, but I am much older than you, and I know many things which you would not believe. However, he added, if you do not approve of my stories, you may tell some yourself. And with that, Old Shut Eyes folded up his dream umbrella and vanished, and Hylmer determined that the next night he would turn great-grandfather's picture to the wall. End of section 5